everyone, it's Katie Garner. Thanks for being here with me as I share with you my latest painting. This painting is titled Because of Thy Faith, and it's a depiction of a modern woman approaching Christ and touching his robe as the woman in the New Testament did. My intention with this painting was to share that no matter our gender or the time period that we live in, that Christ is accessible and approachable by all of us. And the miracles still happen today, and they weren't just for New Testament or Old Testament times. As you can see in this painting, I have a modern woman in jeans. She's holding her scriptures, and she's reached out to touch Christ's robe. And Christ is so close that he can actually reach out and touch her too. He's been there waiting for her to reach out to him. He's reaching out his hand and lifting her face to look at his, so they can see eye to eye. Because perhaps she didn't realize, since she was just reaching for the robe, that he was so close, or that she was allowed to be so close to him, and that she was able to connect with him so personally in this way. Christ's look of compassion and tenderness seems to communicate to her, I've been here within your reach this whole time. I love you. I'm so glad you reached out. The woman's face shows awe and wonder and maybe a bit of shock upon discovering that Christ is so near and approachable because she didn't realize that before. There's a glimmer of a tear still next to her eye that speaks of the pain and suffering she has endured, but that pain is diminishing now that she has reached out to her Savior. Through this painting, I hope to help others come to understand that Christ is very real and approachable, that he sees you as an individual, and that he's spiritually close enough to touch by each of us. I was inspired with the idea for this painting all the way back in April of 2019. And I know exactly when I was inspired with the idea because I sketched it out in my journal. And I was at a conference and I was taking notes from that conference. Let's see if I can show you this. There's my quick little sketch of this idea and you can see there that there's a woman uh, in jeans and she's reaching out to touch Christ's robe and this is how this is how most of my paintings uh, with spiritual messages start. They start with a little very cursory gesture sketch from my mind into my journal or my sketchbook or um, whatever paper I have on me at, a time, at the time. Um, I've also been known to sketch on receipts <laughs> if I don't have any other paper with me. Um, because when the ideas come to me, I just want to get them out visually. So that's often how I start and um, I didn't get a clear image that would allow me to move forward at the time. Usually when an idea comes to me, um, it might be sparked by something I hear in a talk that I'm listening to or it might be sparked by something I read in the scriptures or sometimes they come to me at night in those moments between waking and sleeping where the veil is thinner. I usually sit with them for a while and I let them I let them build and I let them grow and I imagine um, what the message is that the painting really should portray and how I could best portray that message in one single image and they often start out much more complicated and then get broken down into the most basic of uh, basic symbolic images that I can use to create both a visually appealing painting and also a uh, symbolically powerful image. And, and so, since that's usually my process, I sat with this for a while. And I was a little bit baffled because I felt so strongly about the idea when it came to me and I was so moved by it and excited to do it, but more was not coming, more inspiration was not coming and I just kind of felt like there was a block. And the one thing I did receive is when I was sitting in church on Sunday, I looked across the aisle and I saw a woman named Caroline and I had the impression that I should ask Caroline to model for me for this painting. And so even though I didn't have a direction for the painting yet, I moved forward in faith and I asked Caroline if she would model for this specific painting and of course she agreed. And I felt like if I moved forward with faith in that, then I would receive the rest. And it didn't happen. <laughs> I, 
I struggled and, and just didn't, I wasn't getting more. And so I ended up putting it on the back burner since I was having a baby anyway. So last August I had my seventh baby. She's now six months old and um, I kind of forgot about the painting. Um, at least it just, it wasn't on the forefront of my mind. And then in January, I received a calling. Shortly after I accepted the calling to be on the Women's Conference Committee, I received a phone call from a woman named Sherry. She was a co-chair on the committee. And she said, I see that you're on the committee for this Women's Conference, and I wanted to ask you a question. And I said, okay, go for it, what's the question? And she said, well, first let me tell you that the theme for this upcoming conference is come touch the robe. And I immediately interrupted her and I said, are you kidding me? She was, she thought I was upset. <laughs> she said, um, no, I'm pretty sure that's the theme. <laughs> I was like, no, I've got to tell you, I had an idea for a painting about this, about a modern woman touching Christ's robe. And I haven't followed through with it yet but it's been just sitting there waiting for me to paint and I'm just in shock that the theme for this conference that I'm on the committee to help plan is come touch his robe. And so she said, well, I guess I know the answer to my next question because I was calling to ask you if you'd be willing to paint something for the conference. And so of course I agreed to paint something for the conference. And of course she was inspired. And of course the theme for the conference was inspired and of course I was inspired to paint this painting and it's all coming together and I just had chills from head to toe and just knew I was supposed to paint this. But then I spent the entire month of February and into March trying to complete this painting and it ended up being the hardest painting that I have ever done in my entire life. But the thing that kept me going was that I knew I was supposed to paint this. I'd had all these confirmations that this was the thing that I was supposed to do and so I just kept plugging away at it. Part of what made it take so long was the fact that I have two babies. I have a baby that's about to turn two and a baby that's now six months old. And so it makes it really hard for me to find time to paint. And so I'd get only an hour or two a day that I could work on it, but I worked on it consistently every day. And some nights I would stay up late at night and so that I could <clears throat> have a few more hours to work on it. I ended up having to repaint and fix so many sections of this painting, which is unusual for me to have to do that so many times. And then the thing that was the biggest challenge for me was Christ's face. I, I took a picture of this model with her husband, and I had her husband dressed in this, these robes. Her husband does not look like this. This is not what her, this is not her husband. But the pictures I took were her husband and her. And I just planned on using the picture of her husband and using some other combination of reference photos to try to make up a face for Christ. And I thought it would be a whole lot easier than it was. And I really, really struggled with it. I painted his face at least five times over and he just always looked awful. And it was so discouraging because I wanted this painting to be something that could bring the spirit. I knew that this painting was gonna be displayed at this conference, and I wanted people to be able to connect with, uh, with Christ through this painting. And so I knew it was really, really important to have a great face on Christ <laughs> and to have the expression that I wanted. And I didn't know how to do it. And I can tell you that my struggle was not for a lack of praying for help, because I prayed for help every time I touched this painting. And and then some. <laughs> and because it was always on my mind all day long. And I always had a prayer in my heart that I would be assisted in my work and that I would be able to create something through the grace of God that would be able to bring people to Christ. And um, it just wasn't, it wasn't happening. <laughs> and it got really discouraging. At the end, I had a deadline. I had told them it would be done by last Sunday and here it was Saturday and he still looked awful but I decided to pick up the brush one last time and give it a go late Saturday night within an hour and a half around 11 30 
I stepped back and looked at the painting and thought, I think I just found Jesus. <laughs> and it was remarkable that in an hour and a half, all of a sudden, this face came together and the more I looked at it, the more I thought, don't touch it, just leave it. And I had this phrase come to my mind as I stood back and looked at this face that I just painted. And the phrase was, we worship a fourth watch God. And now I knew exactly where this phrase came from, and it came from a talk by Mike Wilcox, which I will link in the comments below. The section of the talk that was speaking to me in this situation was um, where he was talking about God being a fourth watch God. And the story he was referencing was from the New Testament where the apostles were caught in a storm in the middle of the night in on on the water and they were rowing and toiling against the the storm and Christ was standing nearby looking out onto the water and watching them struggle and he waited until the fourth watch now Mike explains that the night was divided into four different time periods called watches and the first watch was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. roughly, and the second watch was from 9 to midnight, and the third watch was from midnight to 3 a.m., and the fourth watch was the last watch of the night, and it was from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. or sunrise. And this was the time that Christ chose to walk out on the water and come to them. And he points out the fact that it says there in the scriptures that Christ watched them and he saw them struggling and yet he waited. And why did he wait? He waited because he knew that it was good for them to have that struggle. It was good for their growth and progression to have that struggle. There was a reason for it. And so he talked about how that principle plays out in our lives often where uh, we struggle and we struggle and we hope that he'll come in the first watch and we hope that he'll come in the second watch and we hope that he'll come in the third watch and he just doesn't and we keep struggling and finally when we are about to break he comes to us in that fourth watch and and he does that in his mercy because he knows that we will benefit from that growth and so that was the message that that came to me about this painting and the reason for my struggle with it. So after this experience on Saturday night, I had an additional experience on Sunday that taught me more about why I experienced this struggle. And it came while I was reading scriptures with my children and with my family on Sunday night. We were reading in the Book of Mormon in Jacob chapter 4, and when we got to verse 7, it jumped out at me. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness, that we may know that it is by his grace and his great condescensions unto the children of men that we have power to do these things. In essence, God was telling me, remember that it is my power that has given you this gift and that is enabling you to create the things that you're creating. After seeing myself struggle and struggle and struggle and seeing what I could create when Apparently, I was left to my own abilities <laughs> and seeing what I could create in that last hour and a half when he came to me in the fourth watch and helped me finish the painting in time for the deadline. I have been praying for the last little while, just occasional little prayers in my heart. Heavenly Father, please help me stay humble. When people give me praise and recognition for my artwork as my abilities increase because I've been working at honing my talent and abilities. Every time I receive it, I have this little prayer in my heart that says, Father, please help me stay humble. Please help me to remember that this is thy work and that this is thy power and thy gift that thou hast bestowed upon me. And it's because of thy grace that I'm able to do the things that I do and help me not not ever to think that it's me that's so wonderful because I know it's you and so he blessed me with this experience
where I could struggle and have such a powerful manifestation of his power in my painting. So I just wanted to share that with all of you and let you know the story behind this work. I would love to hear your responses to this painting. What does it make you feel? What does it make you think of? What does it make you realize? And please share it. I would love to hear it.